Hello, good morning. Welcome back to my video. My video on Huawei routing and switching elite training for HCIE. Today's topic will be on multicast. My name is Yap Chi Yuan. I am the Huawei instructor. Okay, let's look into our topic. Now on the high level, uh, today's topic will be on the multicast. All right, so we are going to look into the multicast. This is a favorite topic in your exam. And uh, the multicast is important because it reduced the load on the network as compared to unicast. And multicast is widely used for various scenarios, especially for IPTV. Now let's look into the objective of our topic. Here we are going to look into the multicast principle, including how we can create the multicast group, the joining of the multicast group, how multicast work. Then we are going to look into the configuration command, some of the troubleshooting capabilities, as well as the enhancement of the multicast. And finally, we look into the exam skill for you to pass your HCIE. Right, so these are the content, all right, including the multicast principle. We are going to look into some of the basic about the multicast, including the IGMP, layer two multicast, uh, Particularly, we are going to look into the PIM, Protocol Independent Multicast. So we are going to look into the command, all right, especially the troubleshooting. And we will also look into the case, plus some of the exam preparation. Right. Now let's start our topic with the multicast principle. And the first principle I'm going to touch on will be on the multicast basic. Right. On the multicast basic, these are the topics that I will run through. First, we are going to look into the introduction of multicast. What exactly is multicast? The model of the multicast. What are the service model of the multicast? How can you plan for layer 3 as well as the layer 2 address? And what are the multicast protocol in detail? So here we have the uh, introduction to multicast. All right, so um, multicast overview. Multicast implement point to multi point data transmission, and only specific client can receive data from a source. Now, that is exactly what is multicast for. But before we start on the multicast, let's look into what exactly is unicast first. Now, as everyone aware that unicast is one to one, all right, so if I have a server here and I have a receiver, that want to receive a packet from server, so server need to know that PC1 is my destination. So it will send this to R4 because this is my gateway. And R4 is going to look up the routing table and send the packet across the network to PC1. Now, at the same time, if let's say PC2, or in this case, PC3, want to receive a data, it's going to send this information to R3, R3 to R4, and R4 uh, send it to the server requesting for the data. So the server again will send this information toward to the receiver. So which means that if let's say I have two receiver, I need to have two packet. And if let's say I have three receiver, then that means that I need to have three packet. Now that is in unicast. So if let's say we look into the unicast definition, Unicast characteristic is volume of data transmit on the volume uh, in the network, sorry, on the network is proportional to the number of users requiring the data. Basically, it means that if I have two receiver, I need to have two stream of data. If I have two receiver, I have three st stream of data. So data transmission consume high bandwidth because it can be the same data, but the router need to process the data and each of these, they need to do a lookup one by one and start to do forwarding. So there is a unicast. Now, beside unicast, we have broadcast. Broadcast is one to everyone on the network. So assuming that now the server send one packet of this data, to the network. So R4 is going to replicate to all the interfaces, or in this case, active interface, toward to other router, except from where it came from. So it will be flooding to all the network, and 
all the routers that receive it is going to flood on another interface. So regardless whether PC1, even though this is non-receiver, all right, you are forced to pass through and eventually going to drop the packet. So regardless whether you like it or not, in the broadcast, you are going to flood to everyone. So in the broadcast, the characteristic is all client receive a data packet regardless you want it or not, and much of the bandwidth is wasted. So that is the disadvantage of the broadcast. And now we look into the multicast. Now let's look into the multicast key advantages. Now firstly is it reduced the network traffic and load of server and a CPU. What does this mean here? Now assuming that in this topology, PC1 and PC3, these are the only two hosts that would like to have the uh, multicast traffic. Because the multicast run on the multicast group, which is a class D. So the user, in this case PC1 and PC2, want to join a group. All right. And due to, due to the multicast on how it works, we are basically using IGMP telling the router that I would like to join the group. Now, if let's say PC2 doesn't want to join the group, it doesn't signal to router 2. So in this case, router 2 doesn't signal to router 4. So only those routers who have the user who are interested on the multicast will forward so router 4 will forward the multicast traffic toward those router who have the user who interested on the group. All right. Now on top of that, you can see that server in this case only send one packet, even though we have two receiver. Now in this case, the server doesn't really concern about who is the receiver. The server simply send to the router. In this case, the router have to decide who that I need to forward to. Okay, so it depends on the PIM, or in this case later I'm going to explain that the uh, protocol independent multicast signal to tell R4 that they do have a user interested on the multicast and R4 is going to forward this stream to those interested router. So by doing so, we reduce the network traffic and the load of the server. So if I compare to the earlier one, if I have three user just now, I need to send three times. Okay. Now, even though I have two users, I only send one time. Now, regardless, if let's say I have three users, in this case, I still send one packet. And R4 is going to replicate this packet to, to those routers who have uh, the user interested on the traffic. Hence, it's also reduced the network, uh, reduced the redundant traffic conserve the network bandwidth and reduce the load on the network. So which means that if let's say I do not have a user who are interested that on this traffic, the traffic will not send toward those that are non-user. Okay, so that is another advantage. And finally, it allows point to multi-point application. Now, as I mentioned, the server doesn't really care on who is the receiver. The server simply send to the router. Then the router have to decide based on the network. Okay, they have to decide where is my neighbor that I send to. All right, so definitely those need to run certain type of protocol, which is in this case, the PIM. So that is the good thing about the uh, multicast or advantages. Now, having said so, multicast also have its own fair of disadvantages. Now, multicast is based on UDP, so which means that it's based on best effort. There will be uh, no way that you can check for sequencing, all right, because UDP doesn't have any sequence number, and they do not have any congestion avoidance, and you might have a duplicate packet. Now, all this can be mitigated by the application, okay, on the multicast application. So generally, this is the multicast. Now, after we know what is the multicast, it's good if, let's say, we can know about the terms. So first, we have the multicast group. Now, multicast group, by definition, is a group of receiver identified by a multicast address. In this case, this is a IP address class D. Okay, so assuming that now you want to use a multicast, you need to know what is a class D multicast address. So typically, it's 224.2239. Anything within this range will belong to a multicast group. Now, next we have the multicast 
source. Multicast source, by definition, is a sender of multicast data packet. So this is your server and this is your multicast source. Next, we have a multicast group member. Group member is a receiver or by definition, is a host that has joined to a multicast group, which means that if let's say PC1 want to receive certain multicast stream, then PC1 need to join the group. Okay, and uh, this is being done using IGMP. All right, and finally, we have a multicast router. Those routers that require to pass through multicast must enable for multicast, in this case, R4, R1, R2, and R3 is a multicast router. Those that need to run the multicast protocol, in this case, PIM. In the multicast, we have two models, or we just call it as multicast service model. The two models that we have is ASM and SSM. ASM stands for any source multicast, and SSM stands for source specific multicast. Now these two models have direct relationship with the IGMP that the receiver use. Now IGMP v1 or version 1 version 2 generally is for ASM. Okay? And IGMP v3 generally use for SSM or source specific multicast. Let's look into the uh, any source multicast for this topology. I have two server, server 1 and server 2. And I have three receiver, PC1, PC2 and PC3. Now PC1 want to join a group of 228111 and each of these PC also want to join the same group. PC1 and PC2 specify as 1111 which is the server 1 as my source and PC3 specify 2222 as my source. Now because that in this model, we are running on any source multicast. The receiver can specify the group but cannot specify the source because the model we are running is called ASM. So in this case, the source can be in anywhere, regardless whether it's server 1 or server 2. Both of these servers can serve for all the three hosts. Now as compared to another model, in this case is the SSM. In SSM, you'll notice that I can specify where is my source and which group that I want to join. So since I'm requesting for server 1, server 1 will be serving PC1 and PC2. And for PC3, I'm asking for source of 222. So server 2 only serve PC3. So these are the difference between ASM and SSM. Now let's look into the multicast IP addresses. So in multicast, we know that we are using class D and we have 224 to 239. So for the 224 to 239, we also segregate into different type of category. Now the category start from 22400 to 22400 is a permanent, permanent group addresses. For example, in our previous study, if we are running on RIP version 2, we are using 224.0.0.9. That's for RIP. If we are running on OSPF, we are running 224.0.0.5 and .6 for OSPF. All right. Even later on, when we look into the PIM protocol independent multicast, they do use a uh, multicast IP address which is 224.0.0.13 for them to communicate as well. So this is a uh, permanent group address mainly for protocol. Then we also have the 224.0.1.0 to 231.231.255.255.255 and 233 to 238.255.255.255. This is for the uh, any source multicast group and this is globally valid and for SSM this is the value. Now for those value from 239000 to 239.255.255.255, these are considered private address. Alright, this is used on the local administrative. It's considered private address on the multicast. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.